the term social practice itself stems from art practice. And I, I don't think for myself it can be, um, I think that's kind of its history and its lineage and the ecosystem that it works within. But I don't think that the tactics and strategies that are part of or that are being developed as part of social practice works are necessarily limited to the art world. I think they do exist in a lot of different forms within a lot of different disciplines. And I think they're more characteristic of um, sort of the, the society that we live in, in terms of the ways that people are going about identifying issues and attempting to work with them or solve them or investigate them more um, or provocate around them. I mean, I think there's a lot of different ways. It's not always a solution, but um, the term social practice, I think is, is the way that we frame it and is probably one of the more um, accepted terms within sort of art practice. And I think that maybe has come from some theory around the subject from arts writers and art historians and probably Harold Fletcher's program, which is called a social practice MFA and so on and so forth. I personally like Pablo Higuera's term more, which is socially engaged art practice, because I think it does connect it with, um, with sort of the art practice lineage. But then I also like the generality of social practice too, in the fact that it might kind of also be part of what other disciplines are exploring as well. So I don't know, I'm kind of split on that in terms of the semiotics. Um, but a lot of the things I think I've been thinking about in terms of what characterizes this practice is um, I think the you know, if there were to be one key principle, I would probably say co-production. Um, or or co empowerment and the notion that um, you know problems issues of social justice um, that affect society political issues need to be approached sort of in a um, co produced manner with perhaps a facilitator or somebody in kind of an artist role um, would work with a, a group and it, that group can be anything, uh, to kind of come up with some sort of um, direction. And I know that sounds so broad right now, but I think the really successful projects that I've run into, there is some erasure of kind of the grand vision or the idea, the notion that there is some grand process to be implemented that will kind of solve everything. And there's actually really a kind of radical openness in terms of feeling like um, these, these problems cannot be even determined or the right questions can't even be asked by one person alone, but that it has to be kind of this co-productive effort. Um, and I think we're seeing that in a lot of different areas of life. I mean, I think it's really a reaction to kind of our globalized environment. It's a reaction to the way that our systems work now. Um, perhaps our different media environment has something to do with it, you know, social media and kind of the uh, democratization of distribution and that sort of thing. But, um, you know, I, I just heard on the radio the other day, Richard Florida, who of course has this like very broad overreaching creative class argument in terms of cities, um, talking about as if it's kind of this new revelation that the way that we should change our manufacturing systems and fa and factories and sort of increase wages for um, low end workers are to, you know, talk to the workers themselves and have them sort of increase in efficiencies of production and things like that. And I was like, Oh, wow. <laughs> you just came. Huh? <laughs> But I think you see that everywhere. I mean, you see that you see sort of economists starting to come to that conclusion. You see companies, you know, Google is a good example, starting to come to that conclusion. And I think that's where social practice has been for quite some time in terms of um, exploring those different types of grassroots method, methods of working.